It's like feeling better. Asturbay, what's up, man? All right. What's up, guys? We're going to play some weird openings today. Unusual openings. It's going to be fun. Bring it on. Any challenges between 5 plus 3 and 7 plus 3? You know the drill. Asturbate. All right. Let's go to the community here and find a challenge. Asturbate. New openings. You're, you're, you're practicing the new openings. Banco. What was that second thing you played yesterday? Where did that come from? G3, D5, Knight F3, Knight C6. I was very surprised. You didn't try to play B6. I don't know if Asturbate's actually here or not. He was in the chat. All right. Tournaments. Create a game. This is so non-intuitive. To the lobby, where we will take on a challenger in casual chess. Ed. Edie. Eddie. Eddie. Three plus two. A little too fast for my first game. Let's get something with five minutes or more. Eddie. Ali Reza. Who's winning the leaderboard tournaments? Oh, that's just the leaderboard. Tournament winners. Fritzy. All right, five plus zero with Vinay, Vinay Bot. That's, it's not Vinay Bot. Five plus five with the 1400. Seven plus zero, it's a little long. I'm doing seven plus three. This is just a warm up game. Five plus five, what's this? Baba Cooley. Baba Cooley from Switzerland. All right, just for fun, it's just a warm up game. He's not even, he's like provisional. Let's do e4, e5. I'm supposed to play weird openings. The Latvian. The Latvian Gambit has been played. I think I'm supposed to play e4 here, right? Then queen e2. Queen e2, queen e7. It's just weird. It's not good for black. The Lat This is one of many refutations of the Latvian, probably. One of many. Now it's like a bad... What is it? Like a king's gambit down the tempo? D3 is not so bad, actually. I don't know how to handle that. It's the queen h5 check at the end. That's It's the last step that's a doozy, Astrobate. D5, pawn takes e4, knight takes e4, queen h5 check. I could probably play king d7 there, just for, for kicks and giggles. Um, <clears throat> but I don't think that's safe. Oh, mommy. What are we going to do here? He's going to take on e4. It's going to mean queen h5 check is a thing. So, yeah, what do you do if it's the... This allows d4, though. You know, it might be fun if he takes and I castle. I play rook e8. What am I thinking now? I can play king f8. All right, it's still confusing. If he takes, I take. If queen h5 check, king f8, it's not that bad, I guess. Yeah, that's what happens when you start a stream, dude. Like two minutes ago. You start with zero, and then you go up. But I'm not sure what that comment's supposed to mean. All right, bishop c5. Bishop takes f2 check, not working here. Let's just castle. Uptime, two minutes. No, it's more like eight, probably. Bishop g5. It doesn't look like the right idea to develop the queen side pieces first. <sighs> Gotta love you, Astrobate.
Viewership is down. Maybe not, though. I usually have about 35. It's, it's really kind of disappointing, but I'm a very independent. I'm a very, very independent streamer. The goddamn independent. Bishop g5 castles looks already good for black. Why? Why would he play e4 knight g1? Queen e2 is really strong. It's basically one of several refutations of the Lafian. Um, queen e2, queen e7, knight e4. White is just clearly better. Most people don't play e takes f5 though. So now, bishop takes f2 check, knight takes e4 check, knight takes g5. That's, you know, viable. We might have something better. Kind of doubt it. You can play king e2. Latvians fun. Latvians are fun. I some Latvian players on stream before. Usually strong players. Tal. Tal like. All Lafian players play like Tal. No, that would be a generalization. What's up, everybody? Everybody, it's a little slow, these European morning streams. This is just a disaster for white. He played knight g1 and then he developed his queenside bishop first. I mean, that's usually like the last minor piece you should bring out in any in any given opening. This is a false, false idea to play bishop g5. King e3. Do we go for the king hunt or just take the piece? I don't think this king hunt is necessarily going to work. Totally speculative. Queen takes g5 check, but it's actually not necessary to do a king hunt. I just take on g5, he takes on e4, I take on f5 check, he plays something like king king e3. I mean, this actually all looks good. I can just take the bishop on f1, is what I'm trying to say. If there's nothing better, there's really no need. Wacky Wednesday. Weird Bob. Creepy. Creepy Bob, what's up? Damn, Bob. Imagine when you're old, how creepy you'll be. Is there a mate somewhere? I want to just take the bishop because I'm lazy, but queen a5 check, king d3. It's hard to see a mate here with just my rook and my queen and my knight. Knight b4 check, king e3. I mean, we're real, real close to something, but again, um, I don't really see a mate. Queen a5 looks the most interesting. All right, we'll try. We'll try for something with knight b4. This goes against my practical advice. To keep it simple when you're out material. I see, I see it, actually. I see it. We've got queen d5 check. Okay, it's over. We're winning a queen, at least. <clears throat> All right. That was easy. There's no mate, though, sadly. Asturbate. Whatever. This was easy. But there was no mate, sadly. Bishop c4 check. I'm sure the computer will have like, you missed forced mate in, in five, missed mate. All right, whatever. Just for fun, I'll show you guys how the opening is supposed to be played. E takes f5, e4. I was actually wrong here. I thought it was queen e2 was the main move. But the engine says 95 is even stronger. 
Okay, it's been a while. More than one good move for white. He's here. We're all creepy in our own way, Bob. I was told last night that Panda was creepy. Nils, the master of the miniature. What's up, man? Mini master. You got something for me? Guys, don't forget to donate, support the stream. And not just your pieces, but donate financially to support the stream as well. Nils has got to have some prep for me. The last game he lost too fast. He went home, he analyzed it. Bring it on. Knight f3. This can't be right for black. h6. That's what I said to myself two weeks ago when I was white and trying to figure out what the I was going to play against this guy. It's weird. It's h6. H6 is weird. <laughs> is that weird enough? It's not weird enough? I'm sorry, Nils. I thought you'd want to rematch. Yeah, I forgot. I'm sorry, my bad. I forgot. Nils, I'll give you a second game today. If you feel like you've been cheated out of a weird opening. Um... But I just kind of wanted to do this Nimzo thing because you had such, you like to play the, the theoretical openings and I don't get that much. I couldn't resist. Honing my, my new trashy variation against the classical Nimzo. Do unto others as they do unto you. That's my motto. My chess opening's motto, just like Carlson, we just steal everyone else's opening ideas. No need to invent things ourselves. Borrow. Poor Panda's sitting there in his pajamas. Everybody's just busting on him. It's it's an idea, isn't it? It looks like um, Nils should have some edge here. It's more or less a Fisher variation. Actually, his bishop's on the wrong square on e2. Normally, it goes to d3. Maybe that's not a big big problem. Actually, it also could be a Bogo Indian. Or a Nimzo. But guys, I'm sorry. No, seriously, I forgot to play a weird opening this game. I got so excited that Nils plays the classical Nimzo that I went, went with my normal repertoire. You get a refund for your game ticket. But I still want to finish the game. You can challenge me again later, Nils, if you're still around. Play a few other people. Okay, guys, so the theme is supposed to be weird openings today. I played a Latvian in game one, warm-up game. But my opponent was only like 1,400, so it doesn't go well when you're 1,400 and you face the Latvian. I think the lower rated the opponents are, generally weird openings work better. Comfort is a big is a big factor when you play openings. If you face something you've never seen before, even if it's bad, it's, it's difficult to, to deal with it. And if you play an opening system that isn't that good, but you know it really well, I mean, sometimes that's more important, you know. It's more important how well you know something than how good it is objectively. That's the basis for weird openings, more or less. Hmm. How's that dark square bishop going, going to help? Turn it into a spectator. Can I play f3 and sacrifice an exchange? Bishop f3, rook f3, gf3. My spider senses say no. 
But Nils took with the pawn on an f4. Wow. I did not think he would do that. I'm not sure that's the correct move. The correct answer was e4. No, I don't know. There's more than one way to skin the proverbial chess cat. But I felt like releasing the tension there doesn't seem quite right. Still, white's position should be fine. Now what? Now what? 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 He wants to play what? Like g3 and f4? Kind of risky. Okay. How about a little white squares? I certainly don't want my queen on the long diagonal. White squares feel safer than dark squares with that particular guy hanging out there on the long diagonal. What's up, 15 viewers? Where are your friends? Where are your brethren, sisters, and relatives, and friends, and chess club buddies? I know it's early. It's only 10 o'clock here. 10.25 to be exact in Europe. And if you're in the United States, it's late. Kablam. B5. The Kashishvili. Pawn break. This is probably a mistake in this, in this position. Probably. First things first. I'm not actually threatening anything. <laughs> Nils is a good classical player. Two bishops. If I play b5, I guess he takes, and I create an imbalance in the pawn structure that I think generally favors the player with the bishop pair. But again, this is just the general principle. You can't apply it to every kind of situation, but it is something to keep in mind. Knights, I think, like closed structures. He saw my move and he freaked out. He's like, I'm not going to let him play b5. I'm not going to let him play b5. It's possibly a serious mistake. F3. Now, I feel coordinated. We're more coordinated than before. Knight g4 acerbate, right? You like that. The subtle approach. Jesus. Damn, dude. If the exchange before, the exchange sacrifice before wasn't good, this one definitely is an improvement. It's hard to resist this, honestly. I could play b5. b5 anyway. The whole... The whole hog. I was originally going to play knight h5, you know, the kind of classic knight f4. But let's try it this way. Asturbate, how's your white square bishop doing in the Owen defense when they play d5? That's the beauty of opposite color bishop positions. The material doesn't matter anymore when there's that extra bishop. He doesn't have a dark square bishop. I have a white square bishop. The strategy, strategy. Strategy. Strong pawn center for black, too. Oof. This will only pinch a little bit. You might feel a slight pinch. <laughs> pinching sensation, Nils. All right. 
He doesn't like when I tease him. I'm sorry, guys, I forgot to play a weird opening, but it was fun. Destroyer942, Marco. So generally, I play people who are subscribers first, since we lack any subscribers in the challenge list. We'll take what we've got. Play You play in the bishop c8, right. If you can't break the pawn structure down, you retreat the bishop back to c8, which is what I would have done if I had, if I hadn't been able to play to break his pawn chain. That's why I thought Nils should have played e4 in the first place. But I'm sure there's other ways he could have played it. You know, the way he played it wasn't so bad. He just has to be careful about that. That, that bishop e4 was a terrible move. He was okay until that. Okay. Weird openings. Yes. This is called the St. George... We can play e6 and kind of delay b5. I could transpose with Sicilian if he let me. Normally I go with the b5, but let's try something different. It's not a St. George if you don't play b5. I guess it is a St. George, kind of. It doesn't feel like a St. George if you don't play b5. Now basically, I mean technically the St. George is e4a6, but the whole idea is to play b5. I think if I don't play b5, it's sort of like, depend on what I do to follow it up, what, it, what does it become? Knight f6 is a c3 Sicilian. After e5, knight d5, b5 is in the realm of the St. George. D5 is a French. So sometimes I play E4, C5, Knight F3, A6, the O'Kelly, O'Kelly Sicilian. I, I would almost not label that a weird opening. Barely qualifies. How should white respond? E5, knight, D5 is a C3 Sicilian. Not a particularly great one for black. Feels like something Astrobate would get with some faulty move order or something. Remember you had those early games, Astrobate, where you, you played some games where you, you got your knight kicked around like a numerous, like a numerous times? All right, how bad is this? I don't know, but it's not great. The other possibility was knight e4. I'm on the verge of complete disaster here. That's why. b6 or c7. I don't know who destroyer 942 is. We've played them four times apparently. If you guys hear a banging sound, that's the repair guys on my, my roof. My, my entire house, huge building in Budapest is getting a new roof. So They're, they've been pretty good though. They let me sleep until nine. It's so cool. Like in the US, they would start at like eight o'clock. We've got the old, the old world style here. Let the residents sleep till nine. It's pretty cool. All right, White's playing this really. Really nasty position for Black. Who can't sleep until three o'clock in the morning, sleeps until nine. All right. Knight c3, just reinforcing the center. This is a really bad position for black. It might be playable. It's not lost. This is horrible. So this is like a massive strategic mistake, like knight takes d5. I'm just, 
sitting here literally pointing out to the viewers that this is like the worst piece in the world. And he's letting me trade it off. He's threatening bishop g5, winning by force, so I think this is safe to assume a good move. Very important strategic mistake by white there. When you have a space advantage, you never ever want to like let the opponent trade off, especially their bad pieces, like that knight on b6. It's literally the worst thing he could do. Well, one of the worst things he could do. Still, bishop g5 appears to be some sort of threat. I don't know how serious it is. Maybe not. I mean, knight c6, bishop g5, queen a5, check. Bishop d2, queen c7. Castles, queen side, pawn takes c5. I'm fine there. Black is more or less okay. And, and I shouldn't have been. Where did I make a mistake? Okay. Knight f6, I guess. Honestly, I underestimated c4. If that's strong, then I can't play knight f6. Then I have to play either d5. Really, only the only good move here is d5. The problem is, okay, b5 is playable. It's it's a St. George, um, but not great. d5 objectively is a... It's an Alapin Sicilian. c3 against the against a6. My ex-teammate Grandmaster Zoltan Varga used to play the same, the O'Kelly, and, and he would play d5 there, probably. Juicebox Wizard, what time do you sleep until? Typically. Juicebox Wizard used to be like in the, in the army. He's used to waking up early. I was just talking about how my roof construction guys don't start until 9. They probably have like a... They probably can't start till 9, not because they're nice, but they probably have some place they're forced to stay that's like far away or something. It probably takes them an hour to get into the city. I don't know. But I'm glad they don't start till 9. They actually woke me up exactly when I was supposed to wake up. Which I appreciate. But Destroyer let me get away with murder. Murder on Fifth Avenue. The weddings. Juicebox, I was just looking at some beach in Thailand that looked really cool. You like that? The constant honk, honking? Yeah. Well, if you live in in the most populous district of Budapest, we probably get a lot of cars, but nothing like Southeast Asia, I'm sure. Um, castle. Check. Fully equalizing. I'm sure they have all sorts of crazy cars everywhere, no matter where you are, right? Lots of good controls on the emissions out there. If they have California emissions, the pagodas. What do you mean the pagodas? What does that mean exactly? Shit, he has bishop takes h7. It's a real move. I want to play rook e8, but he has bishop takes h7. Just winning a pawn. I guess I can play... No, then he's threatening bishop g6. It's just harassment. Constant harassment. Once I do that. All right. Oh, the, the, the Buddhist temples. Okay. I never realized. I thought it was 
I guess I never really thought about it. I thought it was that place in the mall where they pierced your ears. Bishop to e4. I'm a worldly dude. At least we got out of that situation. He had me in an awkward spot on the e file, and now we're out of that. I mean, Bishop e4 itself is in a bad mood, maybe. Though it does feel like I sort of got the better of the deal. Bishop d7, or Bishop h5. Still, the position remains equal. I don't know, man. I would feel safer in Thailand. But I guess you're saving a lot of money there, huh? Is this guy aggressive or is it just my imagination? Wouldn't classify him as a solid player. Optimistically aggressive. No fear. Like, what is the deal here? Vietnam, Vietnam's coming up though. But it's not like the touristic destination that Thailand is. Destroyer 942. Played them four times, we won all games. But this time it's getting a little out of control. He's not playing like a 1700 anymore. It's incredibly fast. What? Oh, he's banking on queen e7 there? Trading queens? He's just making random fast moves without really thinking about it. That's the strategy that might work in bullet chess. Not really recommended here. See, I've been thinking all this time. Man, I was I was clearly worse. Various points. When he played b4, it was like completely intuitive, but I mean I doubt he took the time to calculate anything. Totally works though. Okay, it's increment, remember. You can't just play for time. I mean, that's the reason I do the increment is because the commentating. I mean, I don't necessarily prefer. In fact, when I play anything else off stream, I prefer to play without increment. But if we're going to talk about the games and analyze them while we're playing, I'm at a handicap. The increment allows me to not lose on time. But I think like after B4, I would say Wei has like a, an advantage after that move, unless I'm missing something here. Computer just takes it. Wow. Honestly, I looked at this, but I thought he has compensation. 
That's not enough, though. I basically looked at this in my mind, and I thought there would be enough pressure down the B file. It's pretty scary for black. Look at this line. Bishop takes b4, bishop takes b4, rook c1, bishop c6, bishop c6, pawn c6. Still, I'm... Um, still, I'm the unbreakable... Unbreakable king side. Apparently, it was... It was a... It was a just a, a sack. It wasn't really sound. Okay, guys. Weird openings. That's the theme. That wasn't good. I played knight f6, and after d5, c4 black. e5, c4 black was really in big trouble. Um, let's play something fun. How are the winters in Hungary? Our winters are milder than where I lived in the United States. I lived in, in Massachusetts, which is fairly far. In the northeast um budapest winters i would say there's something like washington dc you know a little bit of snow not a lot maybe very rarely it doesn't go below freezing very much slightly milder than you know where i lived in, yeah lake baltimore Rarely do you get snow, and rarely does it really go below freezing, but it's not, you know, it's it's temperate, I mean. All right, let's try, let's try a Nimzo, Nimzo Larsen. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you can think, you know, hey, you're in a wintry place. It's like 50 degrees now. Actually, it got a little colder. Fahrenheit, I'm talking. The last week it was like 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, it's down. It's down in the 40s this week, but that's pretty cold. Yeah, Minnesota must be awful, man. The tundra. Mid 80s. How are the mosquitoes? Bishop d6. The problem with this is that if a knight settles on e5, you won't be able to take it without giving up your bishop. Okay, I have no idea what I'm playing. I mean, I never play the, the birds opening much, so I'm just kind of winging it. Get it? So you guys like the comedy here. Birds is not named after birds. There was a guy named Henry Bird. Is that right? It is Henry Bird, right? He wasn't like the explorer. I think I'm probably getting them confused. American explorer? No, he wasn't even American. Admiral Bird. What was Admiral Bird's first name? <laughs> it's pretty funny, man. That was the best part yet. What was Admiral Bird's first name? Henry Bird? Is that the name of the chess master? It's not like a household name. English master. Bird opening. Bird apostrophe S. Marco, I have some, some friends of mine who would take that pawn on G7. This one grandmaster friend of mine, his motto is always take. I'm a little more circumspect about such things. I, I prefer to err on the side of caution. Actually, I made a similar pawn sack in my own game two weeks ago. The guy just took it. It's possible to take the pawn on g7, but it, it's going to give him some play. So, 
just double his pawns up and play positionally. Nimza would be proud. Next up, the Queen's Indian um, knight problem. I've talked about this recently. Knight a3 is out. Actually, I won a game against one of our friends, Yerun. By playing against his knight on b1, consciously. g4, ugh. Does g4 just win a piece? No. Did it just, like, win a piece? Dude. It's not so simple. g4, bishop g6. Ugh, it's so ugly, I didn't even consider it. g4, bishop g6, f5. He has queen h4 in some positions, but I've got rook f2. So that actually saves him. e takes f, g takes f, queen h4, threatening mate. Then I have to play rook f2, and he has bishop takes f5. It's a good thing I calculated all that first. Just my intuition is so strong, turkey farm, that I just knew that I couldn't win a piece with g4. Um... You know you're a materialist if you consider g4. If it was a tournament game, I would think about it. But sometimes you have to just throw this stuff out the window in order to be practical. Um, he's fishing. Queen h4. That's right up my alley. The only problem is, the one move he could have played last move, which bothered me a little bit, was bishop c5. It's not clearly good, but it would interfere with normal plans. Henry Bird invented the 8x10 board with the two fairy pieces. Fairy chess. Never really caught on. I even vaguely forgot about that, you know. I had some comp compilation, some book of all, like, famous chess stories that was probably in there. Never read it from the big book of chess or some... I don't not that. It was something else, but... When you're a chess player, people buy you, like, Christmas gifts and stuff that relate to chess. Sometimes I would get people who would buy me... They would buy me gifts like that. Mostly, I have more sort of theoretical chess books. But I like the stories, too. No, I'm trying to think of the book. The Treasury of Chess Lore. I think that was it. Now we just have nice grip on e5. Everything's under control. Even just queen e1, I like black's... I like white's endgame, actually. But we'll do this. Knight e5. He's still got g5, potentially. So knight e5. Now your g4 idea starts to look good. Think toward the center. The treasury of chess lore. Yeah, black is a practical player. But I think he's... Dangerously close to losing a piece again. He's got another miraculous saving move there. E4 again. Just try to chip it open. Just kidding. I know you don't have to take that. We get a little, get a little closer to his king, maybe. It looks safe there now, but it won't necessarily always be safe there. Hmm. Unfortunately, I couldn't win a piece of g4 because of queen g6 ideas. 
This also blocks up his g-pawn. Presumably he has to play bishop g6 now. Am I winning a piece? Let's just see if I'm really winning a piece this time. Bishop takes f6. Pawn takes f6. f5. Pawn takes f5. Pawn takes f5. Queen e3 check. King h1. <laughs> it's ridiculous. He's got like rook e8. Saving the piece. Yeah, but it's really strong. Bishop g4, h5, only move. Pawn takes g6, check. Pawn takes g4. Or but I can play just pawn takes g6. I guess he's listening to my suggestions. Um, shouldn't give him too many hints. Bishops to g4, bishop g4, h5. He moved that rook. Actually, this is even stronger. He should have done his a rook to e8. Then h5 and the h rook plays. This is going to save me a lot of frustration. The wrong rook move. The king never was safe there. Always playing for cheapos. Asterbay taught me everything I know. King's Indian isn't the King's Indian against e4. It's the Pirates defense. The clapper. Clap on. Oh, yeah. We managed to win the Queen. That should do it. Make sure we don't get back rank mated. And it's not looking good for black. Does prevent the mate. Where's the mate? No free cookies challenge me to crazy house. I don't play crazy house. I haven't played crazy house in forever. I might play for a special person, but not just randomly on the stream. Shawarma makes me hungry. Sounds like shawarma. All right, 2100. Free cookies challenge to regular chess. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a quick adjustment. Um, 
Man, I'm thirsty. Let's get some beer. No, I'm just kidding. Not in the morning. Enough beer. Enough with the beer. All right. Can't drink beer constantly. Weird openings I'm supposed to play. So... C3, the problem with C3, it doesn't have that much independent value, but... The second player who played D5. I wanted to try this weird opening that a friend of mine suggested, which is like C3 and G4. But everybody plays D5 against, against C3. There's this crazy book some guy wrote. I don't know what this is called. The El Elshan, that's it. Elshan. Oh, I won a pawn. No, not quite. <laughs> I don't know where I'm supposed to play. Maybe I'm supposed to play Queen H4 there, actually. This is obviously garbage. I try not to play like two ridiculous openings. But I mean, then again, I haven't created any, I haven't created any permanent weaknesses in my position. The bond cloud is e4, king e2. This is the L Shan. Or something like that. It's like an Azari or some master from that region wrote a book detailing this really strange opening that was published recently. My friend has it. I'm like, dude, do you buy just anything? There's a lot of really bad chess books that get published. Nowadays, you can just publish anything you want on Amazon or something. Knight F3, E5, Knight F3, Knight E7. Um, We'll see. That's a transvestite opening. Obviously. Anybody could have figured that out. <laughs> Temptation. I can't resist the temptation. I mean, I've gone to all this trouble to play knight f3. <laughs> I'd as well play knight e5. Quality chess books. Too general. Man. I actually, I haven't bought any chess books in like a couple of years. I have a storage unit with like 500 books in it. Um... I definitely don't need more. Queen d6 resigns. That's hard to really understand. What do you mean you blundered? I don't understand. Alright, drunk is good. That's also good. You woke up drunk. That's the best when you wake up drunk. All right. Know your liver is doing a good job. No free cookies. Challenge to normal chess. Um, all right. Let's try something within E4. Yesterday I resigned in this rapid game against a guy who was 2,000. I lost 77 rating points. I was like 25, 15, 25, 10 in rapid. I lost 77 points. I resigned because I thought I was losing a piece in an end game where I was you know, couldn't afford to lose a piece and it wasn't losing a piece. Like I could just move my king up and I didn't see it. I, I thought, I just really didn't see my king could move up. I thought there was no way up. 
I was still clearly worse, but I mean, it's just funny. <laughs> I did not see my king could move up, you know, so I just resigned. Like, if I move back, I'm losing a piece. It just didn't occur to me. Now, I don't mean to play normal openings. Tricked me. I forgot we're supposed to play weird openings today. The retreat variation. <clears throat> Avoiding exchanges. 92, theoretical novelty. Just because we're supposed to play something weird. Try to compensate here. He's heading right for F2. That's unfortunately a strong move. What am I going to do now, dude? Might have to do what you have to do. You have to do what you have to do. I thought about queen d3, but it walks in the knight b4. The central double pawns are often actually not that bad. Maybe even good. Slowly running out of defenses here. I don't know who this player is. I hope he has a hundred games. What's the best move for white? No clue. I have no freaking clue. But I think I best to develop my pieces. Okay. Why would you choose that knight and not the other one? I think the other knight would be better. What's my idea to defend, though? A couple of attempts here. Queen f3. I takes h2, queen f4. Putting myself, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I had to play a weird opening. I felt bad. You know, after knight c6 now, It's pretty hard to get a weird position. I've gone into like the main line Sicilian. This is only my second stream where I've done the weird opening stream in the last six months and I'm not used to it now. Excuses, excuses. But he let me off the hook.
White was basically almost lost. I mean, on the highest level, I had a lost position, but that's if black executes perfectly. E5 looks pretty good. I didn't calculate this far enough. Guys, welcome to my stream, International Mastermind and Pascal. We're playing unusual openings, instructive and fun. It was funny, when I started the game, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to play something here. And then he played the Sicilian, and I got interested in the opening. <laughs> it happened with Nils earlier. It was like a Nimzo, and I was like, oh, I'm excited to play an interesting theoretical game. Free Cookies just does give out free cookies. His name is a lie. Damn, dude, this is horrible for black. This is possibly a mistake. I should He should have taken the other pawn. I should have taken the other knight. We're both playing badly. We're both making the wrong capture every time. Now black's just down a piece for two pawns. It's just not even close to enough. This is tragic. Horrible play by both sides. If he had moved the other knight to g4 before, I thought that was clearly better. Even the way he played it was okay. He basically just gave me a piece, just for fun, because his name is No Free Cookies. And there are free cookies. Another free cookie. Mmm, delicious. This is not pretty for black. Stay in your lane. Whew, that looks brutal. How can we open it up? Ask to be, you never answer my questions. I was asking you earlier. What was up with, with the G3 E G3 what did you play? Was it G3 D5? Did you play that against me? G3 D5? Bishop G2? No, it was knight F3, knight C6. Isn't that the opening yesterday? What made you play G3 D5? Shamu just started last December. And you're like 2000 or 1900? Damn, dude. That's a pretty high rating for someone who just started. Mate is mate. It is hard to believe. And it certainly wouldn't be possible ever, 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 ever without the internet. In the days pre-internet, there's just no way you could be 1900 that quickly. You know, one thing that I was thinking recently, we often get these questions about like, 
can you become a strong player at a late age? Like if you're over 20, can you become a grandmaster? All this stuff like that. And I was thinking that like in the old days before the internet, like the answer would unequivocally, unequivocally be like, no, you know, but actually with the wealth of information on online, I mean, I honestly don't see why late starter player with as much information that's out there, like more and more people will, will actually start to become like grandmasters. It will even be possible to become a grandmaster when you're like 20 or 30. I mean, it's just not a question of the possibility of being able to do it. It's a question of if you are that age, can you, do you have the time to invest? Um, it's just a question whether you have the time to invest the same way like a teenager would, you know, in, in just playing chess, just concentrating on chess. How many people who are like 30 years old can do that, you know, or even 20, 20 something years old? But I think it's possible, you know, and in the old days, it never would have been possible. But there's people who are like, no, there's no way you could ever become a GM after 20. It, yeah, maybe that was the case at one point, but. Now with the wealth of information that's available publicly, like, and it's so easy, to, so much easier to learn. You don't even need to buy like books necessarily. Although I think the chess books are still very important. If you're really like a genius, I mean, it's possible you could become a really strong player by just playing online constantly. Ice fire C has a weird time control it rated i'm doing five plus three through seven plus three more wa dimitri good to see you dimitri i was thinking about you we had another greek player on the stream last night and um and then it popped in my head who else are we missing you know dimitri hasn't been here jim hasn't been here i know the new stream times aren't good for jim unfortunately but i, I we didn't forget you um, Marwa. The people think that getting old means that you, you can't get better at chess. It's not about old. It's about responsibilities and just having time to devote to chess. You know, if you're a loser and you have no friends and no family and, and no job, you can absolutely become a grandmaster. <laughs> I'm so funny. I know. All right. E4. But I'm half serious. What are we going to do? We're supposed to play weird openings and we keep forgetting. Against Morwa. He's actually vulnerable most in the opening of anything. Yes, the eight hour day job, the famous killer of chess careers. That's the number one killer of chess careers. But if you don't have a family or friends, you still have very solid chance of becoming a strong player. Knight F3. Last time, let's play the elephant gambit against him. Yes. He won't be prepared for that. <sighs> Took on E5. It's possible to take on d5 or take on e5. Both of these are moves. Not like I walk around studying the elephant gambit every day. I'm actually more familiar with the other move. So now, pawn takes e4, bishop c4. I'm out of book. So I would assume like D takes E, Bishop C4 with big problems against F7. Black's just not that far ahead in development that you can just sacrifice the f7 and have some sort of real counterplay. 
Why can't I remember what Black's supposed to do here? Not that there is a real great solution. Like, the Elephant Gambit isn't sound. But at least there's some sort of... There is some sort of semi-playable response for Black here. I mean, I'm half tempted to just play like Knight F6, you know, just develop a piece. I mean, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Out of print. And we'll see after the game. I don't really think there is a good move for Black. <laughs> Honestly, after Knight C5, there just isn't a good move. You know, it's just not a good opening, but we'll do the best we can. It's basically a reversed King's Gambit. Except it's not a King's Gambit. Okay, what is it? I don't know what it is. It's just not sound. It's not a King's Gambit. It's nothing. It's down a pawn. It's good for bullet chess. No, it's not a reverse scoring Gambit. I mean, you have to play C3. Maybe if I played c3, in this case c6, otherwise known as c6. How many pawns am I down? I'm down two pawns, so we're going to need to get one of those back. Now we have lots of compensation. This is just rubbish. 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 I was going to play bishop b4 check, but all that does is trade pieces. Probably best. The Halloween Gambit, that's Acerbate's favorite. He's a specialist. He just likes the name. I don't play the Halloween Gambit, but I do play the, the Frankenstein Dracula. But we're well past Halloween now. Tomorrow's Black Friday. Or the day after tomorrow. I'm, I'm a little ahead of myself. Tomorrow's Thanksgiving. However, I live in Hungary, so <coughs> there is no Thanksgiving. I got confused because I moved my Thanksgiving till Friday. You can do that here. You're in Tunisia. Cool. Never been to Tunisia. I went to the Canary Islands. That's close, I guess. Um, Bishop E3. Well, Hungary has holidays like every week. They have too many holidays. All these like national holidays and stuff. Different sorts of celebrations of independence from different invasions and whatnot. Um, I think that Hungary actually has too many holidays. I'm always making fun of them. Like, I don't think they like to work. I mean, most people don't like to work, but Hungarians enjoy their downtime. I think Americans are a little more work centric, a little too much. You can't generalize, but the society is based on working more hours, probably in the West. There's never enough. <laughs> you guys have more holiday days, I think, than we do. There's always some random holiday. Nobody knows what Thanksgiving is. It's the most unrelatable American holiday in Europe. I try to make like Thanksgiving dinner. I go to the market and buy like a turkey. I don't, I haven't done it lately, but I, had, I used to try to do Thanksgiving in, in Hungary. They have turkey. You can buy like a whole turkey. It's a mess to cook a turkey though.
play the elephant sometimes. I think the move you're looking for was bishop d6, knight e7, and castle. Bishop d6. I had some weird hallucination, like way has queen h5 or something. That's sort of ridiculous. It loses a piece. Well, I mean, I know, like, actually, I know that after pawn takes pawn, bishop d6. Apes real is amazing. Apes real, Lisa, amazing. Um, no, but Hebden, Mark Hebden, the English Grandmaster, would occasionally play that. He's the only good player I know who would ever play the the opening at all. He played it in Blitz for fun. And Mark used to play Bishop d6 against Pawn takes d5. AP ability power. Easy real is amazing. <laughs> okay, Lisa. I just try to make up weird, weird, weird stuff. Um, but I wasn't sure about against Pawn takes e5, Knight c 5 The way I did it, I have like negative compensation. Control the center with your centralized queen. <sighs> Ultra hyper modern? I don't think so. This is just... Black fighting for counterplay. This is an interesting moment, though, where I played B takes C because you would think like pawn structure would be the most important or whatever. I'm not so sure. I'm looking for control of the center. B4 is a little concerning now. I don't want him to play b4. This is going to be like a heavy piece endgame. Where I'll be down a pawn, fighting for a draw. As it should be in the Elephant Gambit. You're at a Greek city this weekend, the Greek chess champion, Papianu. He did 25 player simul. Did you play? Could you play? Oh, that's awesome. You got to draw, really? It's all those simuls against me. You're used to the exact same 25 player simul. Dinekis, was there, there was no clocks, right? I mean, it had to be just a normal simul without clocks, I would guess, in real life. You're welcome, yeah. No, that's awesome. Wow, I'm proud of you. One of the only players to draw. Nice job. Yeah, he's a really strong player, although I, I never met him. Now there's a lot of Grandmasters in Greece. There was a time. There was a time. There was a time. Tactic Master. I wish this just won by force or something.
just lost on time. Damn it. H4. H4, pawn takes pawn. I just have to take on F6 here. Actually, black's probably all right. I'm absolutely 100% right. I had to take on F6, but it's so counterintuitive that I didn't realize it. I'm okay, black's, black's equal, but I have to take on F6. I just was like about to play queen G5 and I realized I can't do that. I can't make an aggressive move in this position. Now, congratulations, good game. Kept pressure on me. Tough opening to play. Ice Fire C. We don't play rated because of games like that. <laughs> I would lose all my rating points. All right. Mule Skinner is subscriber. Then we'll play Dimitri after him. All right, man. Thank God I'm not black. Thanks, Moreau. Morwa. Moreau. The Isle of Dr. Moreau. Morwa. Good game, but you let me you let me back in it. You know the opening should be very good for white. I managed to just about equalize when I lost on time. The problem was I wanted to play queen g five, and by the time I like took my mouse back, put my mouse back <laughs> to like where it was supposed to be, I was flagging. All right, weird opening is Wednesday. What are we going to play? We never play the Grob, guys. Let's play the Grob. Rejected twice. Maybe the Greek boy? What about it? He's the Greek champion under 12. But we couldn't tell if he was, like, cheating or what. You know, it was something weird about that guy. Mouse slip Wednesday. Anand flagged. Go grab. I should see what's happening in that tournament. I haven't really paid attention at all. I was thinking G5. The Disruptor. Disruptor Pawn. I never ever played the Grob. It's funny, you'd think I'd like the Grob because I like to play like A6 and B5 with black. It's really the same thing on the king side. Oh, so Anand actually lost on time in a winning position. Ouch. But sometimes it's like, you know, there's like one move. I mean, if it's that kind of position where there's like one move you have to win, you don't see it, you're, you're screwed, you know? I mean, a winning position is arbitrary, right? I mean, what exactly do we call a winning position? Sometimes it's just one move that's hard to find. He's up a queen for Rook and Bishop. Spaced on time. Getting old. I mean, the Nantes is renowned for being fast in general. But everybody can lose on time. Sometimes you just space out and you forget. You're even where you are. Anand is like 50, 51. I don't know. Around that. Older than me, you know, some people like to troll me. 
say that I, I'm, I'm 50. <laughs> I'm 39, damn it. This should be six Mule Skinner. I forget who I'm playing here. It's like a Pierce where I played G5, G4. No, Anand is, you know, obviously. I like the fact that he's not quitting chess like everyone else when they're like 50. Kramnik. Quitting chess. Kasparov left chess around that age. I mean, he can pretend to play chess, but he doesn't. Rajabov is ridiculous, dude. Is he? He's not even. What is he in his thirties? I mean, Kamsky quit chess too, you know, and he's younger than me, but not by much. Um, I think he is. No, I can't remember. I think God and I are around the same age, actually. Yeah, G to E2. Doesn't count as retiring if you're like in your 30s and you stop. <laughs> Whatever. He's just taking up a new career. Well, no, it's fine. I mean, do something else. Be a stock trader. I don't know. But I feel lame when it's like Kramnik. Just too good to quit chess. Rajabov, I don't care about, you know. When you're like the top three or top two or former world champion, that's disappointing when somebody quits. Kasparov, Kramnik. That hurts the chess world, I think, to have those guys not there anymore. Anand is not giving up. Anand's in it for the money. That's why he had those two world championships where he had no chance against Carlson. He's there to collect the paycheck. He's a true professional. I can't say I enjoyed watching Carlson Anand world championship matches, though. It's like a foregone conclusion. I don't think that Anand believed he had any chance against Carlson. Therefore, he didn't, you know. Whereas like Caruana and even Karyakin believed they had a chance. But if you don't believe in yourself enough, you know, Anand just believed, it's clear to me, that he didn't believe he had a chance. You know, that's the problem. That's why he was so uncompetitive against Carlson. He could have played better. But when you convince yourself you have no chance, then that's the way you're going to play. Like you have no chance. I mean, it was just pathetic the way that Anand lost against Magnus. He didn't even play like himself, I think. He played like someone who just already had decided they were going to lose, to so just go through the motions. All right, what do we do? How about my King's Knight? How is that getting in the game? Knight problem. Problem is if I put it on f3, it gets in the way of my bishop. As I said, it's simply a Pierce where I play g3, g5. <laughs> That's what the grab is. It's Pierce with accelerated g-pawn. If you can't believe you can beat someone, you can't, you know. I mean, don't even bother to try. Unless there's like a million dollar prize fund, then you just show up and pretend to play. I 
I don't think Anand should be playing the World Championship, but I respect him for not quitting chess. Hopefully he doesn't qualify for any more. Hopefully he doesn't win any more candidates tournaments, for crying out loud. It would be ridiculous. I'm scared that Anand would win another candidates tournament or something. Last time, I was like, oh my god, not again. All right, I think we're going to have to do something now. This guy is getting stronger all the time. Skinner. Principal Skinner. Hybrid, now it's a hybrid between <laughs> the Grob and, damn dude. Can I even finish my sentences? It's half Grob, half check defense. At least I found a reasonable place to put my knight finally. Ding. Ding is the one who has appeared to be the strongest threat to Carlson. I think Ferruja has yet to prove himself in the highest level slow tournaments. I mean, he's clearly awesome at bullet chess. But that doesn't necessarily translate into becoming world champion. Queen d3, rook h3, luckily. Finally, Mule Skinner made a sort of concession, exchanging pawns on e4. I don't watch bullet chess, I just obviously noted that he's won the tournament here a couple times. So what's the plan? Batten down the hatches, Mule Skinner. My first grob in ages. Almost ever. I never played the grob. A never grobber. I'm a never grobber. We have to get into stupid Trump jokes. When I quit chess, I'll become a late night talk show host. Compete with Stephen Colbert. Bishop takes before it looks nasty. Maybe I'll sack a pawn. No. Grobbing good. It's British grobber. I'm a British grob expert. This is looking ugly. F3 starts to become even an issue. If I played B4, he would blast me with like a bishop takes B4 sacrifice. That's why I didn't do that. Knight F3 or bishop F3? Or what? 
What am I going to do? I guess I could castle. You know, castle kingside. I guess we have to be open-minded. Here. Mule Skinner just keeping the pressure on, man. He's gotten stronger and stronger. Feels like he's gotten stronger. Though his score doesn't reflect it. He beat me. That game... What was the last game, dude? He had a good position the last game, didn't he? The other day. Now there's this problem. We have a problem. Do you still have sacrifices on B4? Might have to castle. I mean, seriously, B4. Even knight takes B4, check. Pawn takes, bishop takes, check. Pawn takes. Bishop D2, bishop takes F3. It's unbelievable. Practically like Sugzwan. You have to be like a circus performer to save this position for white. He's so strong. <laughs> I like your joke, Ludwig. Yeah, but the sad part isn't like Feingold's wives, like aren't they chess players or something? Like all of his wives have been chess players. They still leave him for playing chess. That's bizarre. He found the secret move. Imagine that. Like, I always made a rule, like, never to date women who are chess players. They're just too weird. He just instantly... makes the moves. How strong is Mule Skinner? Do you guys think? Oh my god. Yeah, rook d2 there. He's really strong. I was in Zugzwa, you know, like literal Zugzwa.
It's literal Zunzwan. Here. I'm just not quite sure. Maybe G6. Preventing H5. And then white can't move. I mean, I can move my rook back and forth. Or move my king back and forth. But that's about it. Actually, I don't think I can even move my king. <laughs> I mean, dude. Minus, yeah, g6 was in there in the top moves. Minus three. That's a strong player. Master level game. He's tough enough even if you play normal openings. He's become ridiculously strong. Chestosterone, another subscriber. Ludwig, subscribers. Thanks guys for subscribing. Don't forget to support the stream. Not a lot of bit donations this week. 200 from Jay Loof, 333 from Oms, Merle Dixon 123, Ludwig 95, he'll turn 10. If you can afford it, please support the stream. Remember to play weird openings. My reminder to myself. Also, guys, check out my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube. I upload all the old streams over there. Um, appreciate it. And uh, we'll try to play something unusual here. Last time I played, I played d4, but we're supposed to be playing unusual openings. Play the Spassky attack. I have a special variation here with black. I play knight f6. Most of the books recommend h5 for black. I lost this position in like less than 20 moves against the Copion. I played knight f6. It's a good move, actually. I invented a new variation and lost in 20 moves. Ooh, is that Simon Williams' face? What is that? <sighs> Neil Skinner, you're very impressive against the Grob. I will never play the Grob against you in a serious game. That looks like a lot of really ugly blitz games that I played that last game. Now what? We've got the leverage of H5. Yeah, I used to get positions like that a lot when I would horse around with Stupid openings like H4 on move one. It it sort of become it becomes something like that. A bad one H4 opening. I don't know. I don't play the grob. I think it's bad. I mean, I I really that's why I don't play the grob. It's just extremely weakening. And um, not not a good opening. You know, that's my final opinion. Ludwig has been taken by surprise by the H pawn. Speaking of H4, Astrobay, you know what Astrobay would play now. It's a choice between knight e5 and knight g5. Sorry, man. Sorry for busting on you. The Grishuk thing? What's that? Grishuk like seemed to give up openings at one point recently. Stopped playing. He stopped playing real openings. Sort of graduated from that. Feels like there's something here. I'm having really crazy hallucinations. 
I guess I could play e5. All right, it's interesting. E5 is interesting. There's a problem with this. That's not the problem. I guess there is no real problem. He can play d5. I guess he should seriously consider that. Bishop takes f7 check. Man, I'm having... Yeah, my original plan was to take knight takes e5, but then you see queen a5 check. Actually, that might be good for white. What's the better move? Knight takes e5 or bishop takes f7 check? Knight takes e5 check, takes... Knight takes e5 right away is not as good. It doesn't lose a queen because the queen a5 check queen d2. It's a positional variation. Don't panic, man. But it's not as good as this. This is just good. Good enough. It's not really weird openings. I mean, h4, I feel kind of like I'm falsely representing weird openings with that move. It's not actually a weird opening. Played against me by by Kopian. It's played by Spassky. It's almost like a legitimate variation, but it's not something you see every day. So at least it was a learning experience for Ludwig. But I have my special variation that I invented, Knight F6. And it was later played by several grandmasters. It's a very cool line, it's a fishing pole e5 knight g4 fortunately i blundered like three moves later it was a funny tournament i played a copian was like the first seed and uh it was one of those tournaments where you go to the tournament and it's the first round and you're just kind of chilling and you think you're 2400 you're going to be playing some fish in the first round and then you like walk into the tournament hall to check the pairings five minutes before the game starts and you figure out that you're paired with Vladimir Kopian. You're like, what the? I'm supposed to be one of the higher rated players in, in the tournament. The, the sickening feeling like the way your stomach sort of turns when you realize like you've been thinking you're going to have an easy game today and you're playing a 2700 or something like that. Like, Oh, all right. There just wasn't enough people at the tournament. There was a really bad turnout, and it ended up that there were like 10 strong players and only like eight or nine weaker players or something. So I ended up totally mentally unprepared to play with someone like Kopion. It's kind of like an arena on the on the chess. You're expecting to get like an easy player in the first game, but it's this arena pairings where you play the other top player in the first round. I hate, I actually hate that. Suddenly Ludwig is playing like a, a man possessed here. Well, Kopian wasn't 2700 at the time, but it was like right around the time when he when he had reached like the final four in the Las Vegas knockout world championship, he was around close to 2,700. He was probably like 2,680 or something. He's probably one of the top three players I played. I just wasn't ready for the game. And I played this line that I actually had played, but only experimentally in blitz. So I wasted this good preparation and blundered like three moves later, thinking it didn't matter like which move I made.
He trapped my knight. He would have trapped my knight in the middle of the board in the opening. He did, actually. I sacrificed a piece for three pawns. But it was totally nothing. It was just bad for me. The alternative was just like losing two tempi and having humiliating position. I decided to just lose a piece instead. At least I, I made the game like 20 moves long. So, because I could have resigned on like move seven. But that's just embarrassing. So he got his pawn back, but Black's development is Black's development is lacking something. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It's actually hard for me to get my bishop in the game. We'll have to like take a time out or something. Play knight c2, develop my bishop, and then f3. Weakens my structure too much. It's always the good old bishop d2. Solid. He deserves a lot of credit for making his position playable. Speaking of the grob, grobbing good. G4. G4 is really tempting here. Ludwig has four minutes. Four minutes remaining. Wow. Dude, that's kind of scary. It's not fair. You should be like clearly worse here. <sighs> Against Bill Skinner, I would lose. Amazing play. He's he's making this work. Incredibly fast. My knight on c4 has done literally nothing the whole time. It just looks good. I'm an idiot. I should have played knight d6 check. God. I did not see knight d6 check. That's like the the game yesterday when I resigned against a guy who was 2,000 in rapid chess. I couldn't see my king could move up. Just totally couldn't see it. I was just chess blind. Man, what a tough game by Black from a bad position. Fast and solid. We still have something. Well, if he's got the acerbate thing going on, where he plays ridiculously fast, just doesn't use his time. Never really thought about it before. I never really noticed with Ludwig this acerbate time management thing. 
But imagine if you actually took your time and you found good moves. Like you found pretty good moves moving instantaneously. But if you actually used all your time, imagine how much better moves you might find. You might even be better now instead of like slightly worse. It's hard, I admit, you know, to balance your time. You know, to find the, the fine line between good moves and playing fast enough. It's, it's just such a waste. I mean, Black had played a fantastic defense here. He went from a completely busted opening to possibly even slightly better at one moment. Just could not slow down. I wouldn't be surprised if there was a moment we were actually better in this game if we if we put it on the engine. Even though it seemed like Black was on the defensive, there was a moment when I started to doubt my position. Now it's just over. Use your time. That's what it's there for. Give me more time to think. <laughs> it's all just a lie. I'm all this stuff I'm saying to you guys about taking your time. I'm just lying to you. You know, I really just just say that stuff so that you'll, you know, give me more time to think. It's just all a conspiracy. Don't believe the hype. I'm just curious, if we just take a moment, I don't want to do a rematch, sorry. Um, if we just take a moment to quickly scan the game, I want to see if there's a moment where he was slightly better in the middle there. You're worse, you're worse, you're worse, you're worse, you're worse. I thought G4 was kind of marginal. It's it's down to 0.3. And now it was clearly better. Maybe you weren't better, but you were just about equal. A couple spots. At this point, the engine says you're, you're equal. That changes its mind now. Anyway, tough defense, Ludwig. Who's up? Chestosterone. Subscribers. And then Dimitrilas. Dimitrilas drew with the Grandmaster in a simul, a live simul in Greece. Lots of simul training. What's up, Mr. Coffee? Dimitri is a, is a simul pro. Secret Simul. <laughs> it's like Secret Santa. A Secret Simul Pro. Alright, weird openings. What are we going to do? Gita B. What's up? The check was so good. <laughs> I enjoyed that grob. I'm just not going to play G5, G4, okay? Actually, Chestosterone plays the modern. This is not that far from it. You can transpose to lines in the modern with, with G6. I remember when Jim Jim made Gita be a subscriber. Former subscribers. Guys, don't forget to subscribe. The solid move. G3. Here we go. You got a modern defense player playing G3. He likes the King's Indian attack too. Bang, e5, the Philidor. 
Guys, what's up? Tomorrow night, it's Wednesday. Tomorrow night, we're doing a stream. Thursday, subscriber stream. We've got several games submitted for analysis. Please subscribe, support the stream, make a donation, be generous. Mr. Coffee, what's up? Are you um, you going to work this week? When is Thanksgiving holiday start at Dunkin' Donuts? Do they give you, I guess it's a busy time for you guys. You have like special menu items for Thanksgiving, right? Pumpkin coffee and stuff like that. Very solid setup. And I don't play the Philidor, the freaky Philidor. Don't forget to donate. Mr. Coffee, thanks for fixing the Moobot. Thank you for fixing Moobot. Moobot no longer says there's no stream on. He no longer says there's no stream on Wednesdays. He, she, it. Is Moobot? Does Mubat have a gender? Does it matter? Would it be politically incorrect to ask that question? Does it make me creepy? H3. What's creepy is testosterone's Karpov like setup here. Mr. Coffee's off for the next five days because you were asking about streams, right? So I'm having my, my Thanksgiving kind of like Friday. There is no Thanksgiving in in Hungary, obviously. I live in Budapest, Hungary. Why do I live in Hungary? <laughs> um, to escape the IRS. No, that didn't work. I can't escape the IRS here. They know my address. You can never escape. That's a joke the Hungarians ever get. Are any of our Hungarian friends still in the stream? My oldest dad joke. Dude, testosterone. Maybe I'll go to Austria for a visit. Um, testosterone. Why are you exchanging on E5? Wow, he just randomly exchanged on E5. Thank you. Italy, Spain, or Germany. Hungary is the best per capita chess country, dude. Strongest. It's probably like the strongest chess country per capita. Stronger than Spain or Italy and Germany, probably. There are more masters per street in Budapest. <laughs> than other Western European countries. Um, it was hard for me to even be the best player on my street, dude. Seriously. In in Germany or Italy, I would... In Italy, I'd be like the, the strongest player in my province or something. In Spain or Germany, I'd be like the strongest player in my, my neighborhood. But in, in, in Hungary, it's hard to be the strongest player on my street. Just more challenging that way. <laughs> Queen C7. I mean, seriously, like how many times did the Hungarian team make like a medal in the Olympics? If you think about the size of the country, their accomplishments are unbelievable. That's why I came here. I mean, constant tournaments against strong players. I mean, and and it's also less expensive than Western Europe. Why would you go anywhere else? Beautiful women. Just like a bonus. And men. Don't get me wrong. Don't mean to discriminate. Bob, wherever you are. If Bob's still here. All right. Anyway.
No, sometimes I cooking turkey is a, is a it's an old tradition for me. I was a social chairman one year of my college fraternity, and that becomes my responsibility to cook the turkey <laughs> for Animal House. There was this, so that's how I got my early practice cooking turkeys. There was this one, <laughs> there was this one time there was an accident with the turkey though. Turkey fell on the floor. <laughs> I'll never forget that. <laughs> Weirdest things crack me up. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm just reliving an old memory. Sorry. I haven't been laughing enough. We need we need to have more fun here, guys. Turkey turned out great. Everybody liked it. I didn't know that I was getting, you know... I thought, like, being social chairman would be fun. I didn't know it, it would get me making turkeys. Seriously. But the turkey, do you know? <laughs> I've got a little bit of asthmatic cough going on. Um, do you know where your turkey's been, Mr. Coffee? I hope you didn't eat any <laughs> strange turkeys in your college days. <coughs> you always want to know where your turkey's been. No, it was all right. It's all right. <laughs> no one got sick. <clears throat> Turkey goes really well with jello shots, too. Chest toss from night A3. Every position is a King's Indian attack. Oh, man, what am I going to do with chest testosterone? B6. I think my builders are on break. They're having their lunch break. I can open the window. We have a very brief, brief period while our roof builders are... <clears throat> Sorry guys, I lost it over the cur the the Kirky. The, the Kirky story just brought back these funny memories. Jello shots, very dangerous. I don't know if they're still trendy. Anyone else like jello shots? <laughs> Don't even have Jello in Europe, do you? <clears throat> do Europeans have Jello? Positional cheers. I never saw like Jello on the on the shelves at the store here. I wonder why. No, they have Jello. They have to have Jello. I think I even saw it in the hospital, actually. They have jello. It's just not called jello. Just general gelatin. Yeah, the old turkey basting bag. Of course. That's a classic, man. 
turkey bag. You know, I just realized that all this turkey talk and we're playing against Turkey Farm. It's kind of funny. Thematic. <clears throat> Thematic discussion for this particular opponent goes by Turkey Farm. He actually lives on a turkey farm. I'm not sure. It's like Mr. Coffee working at Dunkin' Donuts. We just make these things up. <clears throat> in America, I actually had turkeys in my yard frequently. In the process of selling my house still. I haven't heard about the turkeys lately. Don't say that about that bishop. I was just starting to get a little worried about him. Very controversial move now, c5. <clears throat> Botvinnik Jr. playing the white pieces. Botvinnik had a thing for isolated double pawns on c3 and c4. He would frequently make it work. <clears throat> I mean, white structure is a mess, but I don't have an outpost for my knights here. <laughs> right, that's true about, about Benjamin Franklin. A thematic turkey stream tomorrow. Half of my viewers are Europeans who don't give a hoot about turkey. Trying for desperate jokes, but... <clears throat> You guys are here for the puns. And turkeys don't hoot. Right, Rook D5, the famous game where both in exact and exchange. I don't remember who that was against. Highly recommended. Someone was asking earlier about chess books. Get Botvinnik selected games. I've recommended it before. Strongly recommended <clears throat> reading for everyone. One of my favorite players, H4, standard King's Indian attack. I mean, he's going to liven up his, his life with Bishop H3. <clears throat> no but Vinnick exchange sacrifice. Chestosterone is too pure. He will not dirty his hands. You know, this is actually a position where the queen and knights could be very good. But I'm most attracted to is a pawn. <clears throat> queen a4. Queen d7. If I trade queens, I'm afraid it's going to be very hard to make progress. With the queens on, I have winning chances. <coughs> Goodness. <clears throat> what would what would Tivyakov do? <clears throat> Another favorite theme would be pawn takes e6. Now Turkey Farm, are you just surrendering? Come out with your hands up. <clears throat> Give me that. Oh yeah. Nutritious and delicious. It's like a Nimzo. Yeah, he could have played Rook D5, Uber Driver. Like it was an actual move. But I'm not sure if it would be enough. Just resigned. We go back a couple moves. <clears throat> Can he attempt the Butfinikian exchange sacrifice? It's not enough. It's just not enough. His knight's particularly bad on b3 here. 
Yeah, it doesn't seem enough. All right, man. Good, good attempt at a Botvinnik impression. <clears throat> Dimitrilos. But you should be ashamed of yourself, Turkey Farm, for playing D takes E5. It's a wimpy move, and you deserve to lose for breaking fundamental opening principle. <clears throat> Rogozin. Yeah, maybe. Maybe, Uber Driver. There was a game where Buffinick was like clearly worse or worse, and uh, he managed to take himself out with an exchange. <clears throat> with an exchange. Sacrifice with an outpost square like that. King's Indian Master. Actually, um, what was the last opening? Oh, it was the check defense. All right, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Knight c3. <clears throat> Knight c3 e5. So this is the, the Linkspringer in German, right? The Linkspringer. The left knight. Left knight, right knight. There's all kinds of silly moves that are analyzed in that book. The Link Springer, G4, insane things. And this to me seems the most interesting. Accelerated Scotch. E takes D4, Knight takes D4. Yeah, my friend Joe had Weedmaster had game. Weedmaster had game with E takes D4, Knight takes D4, Bishop C5, Knight F5 in the thin air. He had like two games with the Fide Master in that line. The Weed Master used to do this. <clears throat> Knight takes just should be a good Well I, I don't know. I assume this would be good for white. It's just like a good scotch. <clears throat> if you don't like the center, the English is pretty good. <laughs> So this is going to transpose to a bad Philidor, or Steinitz, or well, actually, what would it be? Philidor? <clears throat> Since there's no bishop b5, it can't be a Steinitz. It's just white's queen posted in the center for free. If I give him time, though, he'll play like g6. This is a move that's often seen. I was looking at a similar position today in a Steinitz <clears throat> line. But that was a different line where black had double pawns on b6, excuse me, c6 and, and c7. But I think this is probably known. This is a transposition to a normal opening. We tried to play something weird. <coughs> Guinea pig. Guinea pig allergies. <clears throat> um, yeah, so e5 doesn't really do a lot, it looks like. Unless I could take take with the queen hmm <clears throat> I mean, maybe that is something it feels like I'm giving up my center here this is a very dangerous principle that I'm giving up kind of the way that Turkey Farm last last game exchanged his D pawn on E5. I'm, I'm giving up my strong pawn on E4. Trading it for the pawn on D6 <clears throat> in itself is a bad exchange. I'm hoping that I have enough justification.
<clears throat> check on B5. Check on. Check on B5. Are you a check on? So we keep some sort of initiative. I guess bishop b5 was sort of stupid. You could just play like c6 there. What am I talking about? Bishop b5 check, king f8. Is that what I'm thinking? Maybe I need to have a second look at bishop b5 check. Yeah, in retrospect, <clears throat> that might have been a good move. But Demetrius is just kind of selling out, going into the slightly worse end game. Now check is actually a bad move for me. Would do nothing but help him put his king on the right square. Put my bishop on the wrong square in so doing. <clears throat> we have a very slight edge here. But a lasting slight edge. Hopefully. The only possible, I mean, bishop e5 check, king e7, bishop a4, with the idea of bishop e3. It's slow, though. Maybe bishop e5 check, king e7, rook e1. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> Is bishop there even a good move? It is better to play just like g3. There is knight b5. I mean, I guess we should at least look at it. So primitive. Caveman. <clears throat> knight b5, knight e4. f3, a6. That actually is good for me. Knight b5, knight e4, f3. a6. Screw it. All right, we're down to our increments, guys. So here we are. I thought he should have played rook c8 instead of a6, but it's probably not that big a deal. <clears throat> so the Ludwig system of time management... Play as fast as possible. It doesn't matter if you don't make the best move. Just make a pretty good move and make it fast. On my, on my end, i just rather get the maximum position I can get. Even if it means that I have to use all my time down to increments. <clears throat> now the problem is I have to start giving back. Now I start making like second best moves because I don't have time to find the best move. I was hoping you'll see it my way. <clears throat> Objectively, it's probably a draw. I didn't play this as well as I could. So his time pressure, still he's slightly worse.
stay in your lane. I'm the one with the double pawns. Shouldn't that be worse? <clears throat> Undoubled pawns. Interesting. Hmm, interesting. No more double pawns. Man, theoretically, I wish I could almost play b5. <clears throat> Not quite. <clears throat> it's an interesting idea. You know, if you were to play like king e6, b5 might just be winning. He has to be able to answer b5 with like pawn takes pawn and and king d5 in this position. Otherwise, he's just instantly lost. If d5, c5, that's also very dubious looking for black. But maybe he could play that. So b5, take, take, king d7. Why is this not winning? I literally just said, if you play king e6, I can play b5. You had king d5 there. Oh, man. You literally had king d5. You tricked me. <clears throat> this is a tragedy. He had king d5 and he didn't play it. <laughs> and I was like an idiot, too. I had a winning position after that, but... Wasn't he holding? <clears throat> I wouldn't resign just yet. F6. Guess he can resign. F6, king g6, king e6, h3, king e5, king g7, king f4, king takes f6. Yeah. Guys, I have to go soon. Maybe we'll play Maxwell one more game. I really have to go. I should go. All right, <clears throat> it's time to go. Let me see this king and pawn game before we go. Very instructive. So, it's a draw, but he has to play perfectly. He has to play d5. This is the last thing I was looking at. You know, my first inclination was, oh yeah, I'm winning after c5, but he has d4, dude. So we're both stuck in this world where we can't move our pawns forward. Okay, that's a little tough to calculate. <clears throat> last game. All right, blow mix. Very tough to calculate. I said I was going to go. I have to record a video. I have lots of lessons today. Blobix is a sub. So I'm going to take his, not to hurt you guys' feelings, the other two guys, but Blobix is a subscriber. And we don't see him that often. He, he actually doesn't challenge much lately. Where have you been, man? I always play the Sicilian against Blobix, but it's weird opening Wednesday, so. <clears throat> we haven't seen him much. Don't drop the turkey. It was a small oven. <laughs> I don't know. I was struggling. Alston, Massachusetts. Um. All right. Dimzovich defense. <clears throat> Guys, we'll be back tomorrow with our subscriber stream. We'll play the weird, the weird Nimzo French. The Frimzo. 
just for something different. Blubix is tough. He's a correspondence master. <clears throat> I broke my toe the other day. Feels really good. Oh man. Shades of Turkey Farm. You should be ashamed of yourself. The French against the French. <clears throat> he's he's violating fundamental principles. But I said this earlier. You know what's more important than fundamental principles? Playing positions that you're comfortable with probably is more important than what objectively is best. So Blobix transferring to a C4 exchange variation. Nobody's going to argue that's the best move for white against the French. But if, if you feel more comfortable with that, then probably that's the thing you should play objectively. But I don't know. This move order is kind of weird. <clears throat> Creeping moves. I think that Blavix is good at direct attack. That would be my my analysis. Is Bishop G four a variation? This will transpose to that line I have with someone on sound, right? That bad variation I played. Or would it? Bishop g4, knight c3, bishop b4. <clears throat> we could transpose to the Danish gambit. I'm staying extra long, guys, because I love you so much. Please remember to subscribe and support the stream. It's been kind of a slow week here. This is a Chigorin now? No. It should be like a Danish Gambit. Delacorta subscribed. I think this is like mainline C4 exchange variation, whatever that's called. I was kind of hoping it could transpose to a Danish gambit. Declined. Which I looked at with someone on sound like last week. But um He's not taking on D five. We had the exact same position with someone on sound. Knight F six. How did that go? Knight F six. Can we still transpose? A different position. I don't know. It's also possible to play ninety seven. But this is definitely um <clears throat> also Delacorta, thanks for joining. Unfortunately we're just wrapping up the stream as you subscribed. But thanks anyway, and hopefully you'll be able to catch some more streams. Tomorrow is our subscriber stream. We're alternating evenings and, and mornings, as we did last year. We've got a busy day today. So D takes C4. It should be okay for black. This is a Queen's Gambit accepted, actually. Possibly a blunder. Can we play d5 here? Bishop takes c3. B takes c6. d5, bishop takes f3. B 
Bishop takes f3, bishop takes c3. This is like someone on sound would know this. Is that a move? Oh my god. I'm so terrified of d5 there. That might have just been really strong. What do I do? d takes c4, d5. So if bishop takes c3, d takes c6. Queen takes d1, rook takes d1. Where does my bishop go? Somewhere like a5? And then you take on b7. I can't really be sure what's happening there. It looks like it's better for white. No, he's winning a piece with queen a4 check. I can't move my knight. That's the whole problem. If I could move my knight, it would be no problem, mover driver. You know, there was a time when... Actually... Do you know... Ted McHugh, Uber driver. He plays the the Queen's Gambit accepted. He actually used to get this position against me. We might have even played this exact position. Normally I would stop Bishop G4 with H3. This is just transposed. It feels like a Petrov, but it's actually a Queen's Gambit accepted. <laughs> Oh, instead of knight f6. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knight e7 is a move instead of knight f6. They're definitely both moves. Sorry, I, I thought you meant as an answer to d5. It is kind of a basic tactic. I'm not sure if h6 is good here. Probably unnecessary. unnecessary <clears throat> defensive move that weakens black's king side. But anyway, you sort of end up in a normal position. The Ted McHugh versus me. The colors reversed. It's a standard line. It's where white plays like um, e3 against the queen's gambit accepted. So that the game would start d4, d5, c4, D takes C4, E3, and then black plays E5 in that position because white hasn't played knight F3 yet. So we actually transpose to three different, it's really like three or four different openings. It's the Petrov, it's the Queen's Gambit accepted. It's a classic IQP position. I mean, I guess I could have played Bishop H5 last move, but I was happy to just get back to a position I recognize from the, the Queen's Gambit accepted. Ted and I have blitz games, positions like this. I mean, very, very sort of known position. Leg breaker. Yeah. He's a crybaby. <laughs> He's a good guy. All right. Not a lot of masters in Connecticut, you know. It's never been one of the strongest states in New England for chess. Every game I'm in like ridiculous time pressure. D5. Almost lost. I can just trade everything. Bishop B5, Knight F3 check. Or not. I will do this. This will slightly cause some problems with my structure. So now he's he's a little better. Not really what I wanted to do there. Time pressure made me do it. Yeah. 
Wow, Mr. Fancy. <laughs> it's a good thing you played that move, because I was on the verge of like a kingside attack, Blubix. Queen f3 is a brilliancy. He probably saved himself from some serious danger there. If he doesn't play, if he makes a routine move, I might even like have bishop takes h3 with a really strong attack. Now he's just like slightly better. Astrid likes this bishop here. Hidden bishop, crouching tiger. Oh no. I stopped counting pieces too. Blobix and I have both retired from one move calculations. That's what happens when you get over 39. Too lazy for that stuff. But seriously, he was better. Um, simple blunder. I love queen f3 here. The computer is claiming you should make the routine move. What's wrong with queen f3? Is there something that I missed? Oh my god. What? Oh, that's so sick, dude. Wow. So I have take, take, bishop e4. <laughs> I believed you. Blobix, you would lie to me like that. I was thinking, if you don't play queen f3, it doesn't work. If you play bishop a4, I was seriously considering sacking a piece here. <sighs> Apparently it just doesn't work. Damn, dude. That's pretty harsh. Unbelievable. How does this not work? I can't just take here? Wow. No, there's nothing. What the fuck? I assumed there was something here. Wow. That's crazy. There's just nothing here. Check. One check. Man. Nothing would have worked. All right, Blavik. Sometimes the routine move is the answer. Anyway, I probably would have lost making some sort of faulty sacrifice if you play bishop a4. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for playing. We'll be back um, tomorrow night with a subscriber stream. Please support the stream. We need your support to keep it going. Thanks for subscribing, Delacorda, and everybody for playing. I'm sorry I can't continue. It's been three hours. I'm done for today. We'll be back tomorrow night, 6.30. Please submit your games to the stream for analysis if you're a subscriber. We're going to go over 10 games from subscribers tomorrow night here at 6.30 p.m. CET. Thanks, Uber Driver, for your input. Always good analysis from Uber Driver. Thank you, guys. Sorry. We have to go. We'll be back later. Bye-bye.